You're listening to the official podcast of Asbury University, produced by students with God-honoring conversations that inform, edify, and encourage. This is Asbury. We explore culture and current topics through a Christian worldview, promoting a well-balanced life, and we empower our community to belong, become, and be set apart. I'm your host, Abby Lobb. Welcome to This is Asbury. Welcome to This is Asbury. Today we are joined in the studio with Catherine Wilbanks. And Professor Wilbanks is an Asbury graduate from the class of 2011. And she now serves as an assistant professor of psychology and equine studies. And if you don't know, equine studies is is really popular here at Asbury. They do an amazing job with our equine program. So Catherine works there. She's a licensed professional counselor. And she has been practicing for about seven years as a mental health yes. mm-hmm. counselor, specializing in equine assisted mental health services. And she also has been instrumental in program development for the new equine therapy programs that Asbury has. And so, welcome, Catherine. Thank you so much, Abby. I'm so glad to be here with you. We're so glad you're here. So I just want to jump right into it. So Asbury this summer is celebrating its 25th anniversary of the equine program, which is fantastic. So can you give me a bird's eye view of what, from your perspective, the next 25 years will hold? You know, you guys have built an amazing program under Harold Rainwater's leadership, and you've been working with him to bring these new programs online, really, and you've played a huge role in that. So talk to me about the next 25 years and what you guys are hoping to see. Oh, that is such a good question. You know, when I think about where we've come from the last 25 years, I don't think anybody could have foreseen that we would be where we are today with uh, an amazing property, uh, two indoor arenas, outdoor arenas, uh, so, so many amazing horses, uh, thriving educational programs, amazing students. This is just, you know, a sign that God has blessed us Mm -hmm. and that God has been with us and God is building something amazing. And I think to a certain degree, I just want to answer this question by saying only God knows. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing because whatever he does is great. And is so much better than anything that we could ever do. So to a certain extent, the answer would be only God knows because we could have never foreseen that we would be where we are today in just 25 years. We have so many people come and see our program, visit our program and say, wow, this is amazing what you have out here. When we tell them where we came from, from just a classroom setting with no real equine interaction and its inception, that's where the program started, to now having a big property with amazing facilities, horses, facilitators. So again, only God knows, but to a certain extent, I believe that what we will see in the next 25 years is to go deeper and do even better what we are already doing now. So instead of continuing to extending and expanding and adding, I believe what we will be seeing in the next 25 years is that we will continue to do what we've done this whole time. Fine tuning. (laughs) But go deeper and continue to improve Mm -hmm. and continue to pursue what God's design is in what we're doing already, which is something that we've pursued all along. But I think what we've done so far is a lot of pioneering. Mm -hmm. And now comes, I think, the stage of establishing but more and better of what we've already been doing. Yeah, you've pioneered a lot. I mean, just one of the coolest examples, I think, is the uh, Service Mounts program. You know, we're the only university that we know of, really, that the students train police horse mounts. And they are in extremely high demand now, which is so cool. Yes. And then now this new program that really you're overseeing as the equine assisted services major, this is a new addition to equine. Can you briefly describe what this type of programming is and what this field of work is for those who might not mm-hmm. know? Yes. So equine assisted services is one of many terms. I always tell my students that not even Google can currently tell them or give them 
an adequate answer to <laughs> what, right. what it is and what it's called. There's a lot of confusion around it. So what it actually is, it's any services for humans that incorporate equines. Mm -hmm. So it's equine interactions, whether they are on the ground or mounted, so people riding. And these are, again, services uh, for humans, whether it's healthcare services, so um, whether it is therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, mental health therapy, educational services, where you utilize the interaction with with the horse for people to either academically grow and learn or uh, grow and learn in personal development and social skills, teamwork, communication, and so on and so forth. And then also your recreational services for humans. And these can be regular recreational services or services uh, for people with disabilities to allow them to engage in horsemanship activities, whether again on the ground or mounted. Again, providing these services in an adapted way. You know, you said something last year when we were talking and that I thought was really cool. You said one of the things, and this is just so simple, but one of the things that made this program so beneficial was simply getting people outdoors where the horses are. You know, yes. we spend our lives indoors. And this has major repercussions for our mental and our physical health. Like, this is not news, you know. And so I just love that you said, well, if we use equines in these different therapies, like just the simple fact of getting people outside into the setting where the horses live, mm -hmm. even that alone is so powerful. Yes. And so I just thought that was a neat aspect. You know, there's just something special about petting a horse, too. So <laughs> there's much deeper psychology at work here, I have no doubt. You're a psychology person. Can you talk about the ways you believe God designed the horse-human relationship to benefit people who are hurting? When you approach it from a scientific point of view. Normally, you don't necessarily ask what's God's design. Right. Sometimes <laughs> you do, but most of all, you just look at what what is there? What can I measure? What mm. can we collect data on? But I believe that the little that we found out through research already about why that human horse interaction can be so beneficial and something that I want to insert here, beneficial to the human and the mm -hmm. horse. Unfortunately, so often it's in the current equine industry and traditional approaches that we humans have taken to in engaging and taking care of horses is primarily focused on us. What can we get out of it? Does it make me feel better? Am I having fun? And unfortunately, so often we do not necessarily take into consideration how does my equine partner perceive mm. my care of it, how I am engaging with it, and the activities that I'm involving the equine partner in. So that is something that I believe is also very much part of God's design, that it should not just only be healing and helpful to us, but it should also have the same effect on the horses. Right. So again, coming back, the limited information that we have at the moment does point out that the interaction between horses and humans is something that impacts us neurologically mm -hmm. in a positive way and has ripple effects all throughout our body, all the way into our soul, allowing us to rediscover what healthy relationships mm -hmm. can look like. And I believe that the horse-human relationship is something that God created for our well-being and for the horse's well-being as well, but that it is something, it's almost a safeguard to a sense that you could say that God put in place. So when we were kicked out of Garden Eden, <laughs> we didn't lose that relationship with the horse. We didn't lose necessarily the relationship with God because he continued to pursue us. But I believe it's one of the relationships that we still have mm -hmm. where God is trying to talk to us about, okay, this is what it means to have a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, horses do not necessarily have intrinsic ability to remind us of that because otherwise <laughs> every horse person would be considered the healthiest person in the world, <laughs> right. which unfortunately that is not the case. I am a horse person and to be completely honest with you, unfortunately, sometimes the horse people are the ones that <laughs> struggle the most. <laughs> I think every profession could say the same thing. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But as much as we interact with horses, really, we, we should be able to function a little bit better than we do. <laughs> but again, if we approach it with our eyes on God and allowing him to inform us, what is it that he has created in horses and in us and what that relationship can look like? I believe it is a call back to 
what life was like mm. in Garden Eden, his original design. And that is, from a clinical perspective, something that I believe is of utmost importance when I bring clients out to the farm, even like you mentioned earlier, just into the farm environment, mm. and then letting them spend time with horses. Again, in a clinical setting, the beautiful thing about that is I bring them to something and then oftentimes, yes, I facilitate activities. For, I, I come with a plan, but it is the horse. It is the environment that does a majority of the yeah. work. You led us through one of those one time. You know, we got to kind of be your you know, yes. test client. <laughs> and it really, it really was amazing how the horse was responding to me. And I think you made some joke like, you must be stressed today because the horse is doing this. That I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but you really could see. I, I think that's so cool. So along those lines, there's so many examples like you listed before of equine therapy. What does it look like? And then, you know, talking about who you're helping. This is people who maybe are suffering from PTSD or maybe it's adaptive writing. So many examples of how these are being applied in a clinical setting, which I think is important to note. This is not just like, hey, come to the farm and pet a horse. No, this yes. is real <laughs> data and science that you're unpacking here. Mm -hmm. So how will Asbury's students and professors help bring these these beneficial services, you know, I don't want to say into the mainstream, but kind of into the mm -hmm. mainstream, you know, you're really providing some of that research. Can you talk about that just a bit? Yes. Yeah, so I think from the outside, it will not actually look very different to people who don't attend the university and go out into the same field. I believe what makes the biggest difference is the fact that they are educated in a way that most professionals in the field currently don't have access to that type of um, education and information almost. Our students don't just learn about how to do this job and what to do when in order to do it safely and so on and so forth. Obviously, they learn this as well. But we provide a much more in-depth education and training for our students so that they truly get to know their equine partner and develop a scientific understanding of how horses work, how God created them. And based on that knowledge, then continue to develop uh, professional standards for practice, yeah. for even equine management, and how to safely design activities. Mm -hmm. In addition to, uh, again, then also wrestling with questions, ethical questions of, again, who is my equine partner? And how can I engage with this partner and provide these services in the way that the horse thrives just as much as the humans yeah. do in that same setting. And again, these are important questions that are really resonating with a lot of people in the field currently. But if all the education that you get in the field is from a certification program, those certification programs, they're great, but they don't have the bandwidth to address mm -hmm. all those questions. Yeah. Yeah. However, a higher education degree can, and especially a higher education degree, approaches these with a scientific attitude, meaning mm -hmm. that we apply critical thinking. We receive respect the questions and the uh, areas that we're approaching, but we're approaching them with, again, critical thinking and curiosity yeah. so that we can actually explore questions in a neutral way and not just a way that it's, well, this person says this and that person says that, which sometimes that's where things become a little bit sticky and difficult. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see that all across the medical profession, regardless of whether or not yes. something is, quote, proved by the science or whatever, like, mm -hmm. it, that's always changing. So along those lines, do you see equine therapy as a prescription from a doctor in the future? Kind of yes, that is a good question. So <laughs> to a certain extent, yes, that is actually already happening. I oh, worked great. at a practice where the psychiatrist provided a prescription for a client to receive nature-based services oh, and so cool. then animal uh, services that include animal interaction. I have had referrals from pediatricians who referred the client to a farm-based service. Wow. So that is already happening to a certain mm -hmm. degree. However, okay. when you talk about prescriptions, yeah. you also uh, most of the time talk about a medical code. Right. And yeah. that is something that does not exist whole, currently, <laughs> officially, yeah. for a service that incorporate equines. Because yeah. something that you also have to keep in mind is that these services are not standalone services. Mm. They are healthcare services. So as I said earlier, these are physical therapy services. They mm. are occupational therapy services. These are mental health therapy services. And they have their own codes. Yeah. What we do 
do when we incorporate equine centers, which is we provide a specialized service. So, for example, in the mental health field, you have, for example, play therapy. It is a specialized service, mental health services specifically for children, developed mm-hmm. for children. Yeah. And again, if you want to become a play therapist, you get additional education and training and certification for that. And this is very similar to what equine assisted mental health, quote yeah. unquote, is. It's really just a specialized service. And some insurance companies do reimburse it, again, in certain states, depending on how you can bill it. And some have already stated that they don't. So mm-hmm. that is really where we're at at the moment, that insurance companies companies say we need more research, we need more data to actually show that this is beneficial, and not just beneficial, that it's more beneficial than some other forms of therapy right. and some other specialization. It's, it's probably not the cheapest form of therapy that you exactly. can do. <laughs> Again, the beauty of it, why it is so effective is because you're not limited to sitting in four walled yeah. office and talking, you get to go outside into nature, into the barn, interacting with horses. However, that barn's upkeep and maintenance costs a little bit more than your little four walled right. office. Your equine partner needs to be fed. Right. And in traditional, you know, services that do not involve animals and specifically horses, you don't have to pay for that animal. So that again, you're absolutely right. That overhead cost is something to yeah. consider. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. What impact do you think, and this is really just kind of a broad question, just our psychology when we get outside and we interact with horses in their natural habitat, just give me your, based on what you've seen with your clients, just tell me what that impact is like that you've seen firsthand. Oh, that is a difficult question Mm -hmm. to answer because I have seen it in so many different ways. Something that I teach my students, and I just recently added a CEU workshop for mental health therapists that I mentioned there too, is that you know when a session is effective, when you can walk away and you feel revived. Mm. You feel like I'm alive and I'm at peace. And that is what you see in your clients as well. And that is something that I hands down see much more happening in my clients and experience myself much more when I can see my clients out at a farm and when we encounter the horses. Again, it's almost like you draw the curtains back and you step into something, as I mentioned earlier, your soul almost recognizes I was made for this. Yeah. And it's not, again... I'm riding horses and I'm having fun. It's not, I'm outside and I love seeing beautiful flowers or something like that. It's not focused on me and my experience. It's, I am entering something that is healthy. I'm entering something that I was made for. And again, from a spiritual perspective, it's, I'm stepping into something that I was designed for. I got one step closer to being in the presence of God. (sighs) Yeah, that's and that so. is where healing happens, mm-hmm. and that's where growth happens. That's what equine assisted services is all about. And I believe again, it's just one of many ways that God is blessing us and is so gracious to us to provide us this. In a, again, especially in a world that we live in today, that in itself is so good at being harmful and hurtful. Right. I mean, we're not designed to sit on a phone all day inside. Is that what you're Absolutely. saying? Absolutely, yes. Wow. Unfortunately, yes. Who would have, who would have thought? <laughs> well, you are such an amazing asset to Asbury and I appreciate your time with us today so much just in closing you know in a sentence or two sentence or two why did you choose this career why did I choose this career I believe I'm going to turn it around and say I was chosen for it I always wondered when I was younger what is it that God wants me to do with my life what shall I do I love horses and I love people and I never really knew what it is that I should do with this until I had an experience where parents told me that their children's life is better because they come and ride horses with me. And that's when I realized I don't want to do anything else but this. Mm. If I can help to change lives together with this partnership with horses, that's what I was made for. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of This is Asbury. To learn more about Asbury University, visit asbury.edu. Thank you.